Hi there! In today's video we're gonna talk about pilot checklist. Let's jump right into it! Hi, I'm Gabriele from PilotClimb.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and if you are trying to become a better pilot or have a better understanding about the aviation world, consider subscribing to the channel so you will not miss the next video. Also, for me it's super important that if you've got any questions throughout the video, drop me a comment below and I will answer your questions. So let's jump into the topic. Today we're going to talk about pilot checklist. The checklist are in place to make sure that the critical switches and the critical uh, procedures has been accomplished for that phase of flight. We've got checklists for each phase of flight, such as the, we've got the preliminary checklist, we've got the before start checklist, the before taxi, the after takeoff. So we've got a checklist for each a, a, a specific type of flight and depending on the type of flight you are in, you should read the checklist in a different way. So the first thing that is very important that you understand is that you need to know which type of checklist you have to read and how to read it, all right? We've got two main categories of checklist, the normal checklist and the non-normal checklist. The normal checklists are used every day just to make sure that everything is in place according to the phase of flight, while the non-normal checklists are in place in order to make sure that you deal with a, a non-normal situation that can be, uh, that you can have on, the, in the specific, you know, on a specific flight. For example, if you have a system malfunction and you have a master caution, then you should apply the non-normal checklist. That's called QRH. Inside the QRH, we've got all sorts of checklists that we have to follow. So you cannot, you don't have to guess what you have to do. You just make sure that you actually analyze what's the problem first. And once you are sure that that's your failure, that's your problem, you go into the checklist and you read the proper checklist. But a non-normal checklist, has to be read in a different way than a normal checklist. So that's what I was saying, that's what I meant is that it is important that you know which checklist you are doing and how to read it, all right? So let's jump into the whiteboard because I want to make a concept clear. If you look on the top of the whiteboard here, we've got read, look, listen. This is one of the most important principles on the checklist because if you are a single pilot operation and you are alone on the aircraft, you have to do this, of course, because you are the only guy that has to do the steps and read the checklist. So when you're flying alone, for example, you read a checklist, for example, generator on, you press the button and then you say on. So it's only you. But the things becomes a little bit more complex when you fly into a multi-pilot uh, aircraft where you have to communicate with your colleague. So one guy call for the checklist, the other pilots, for example, the pilot monitoring, uh, will start the checklist, will read the checklist, the list of the switches and the positions, and the pilot flying has to confirm, look, and then call an answer, okay? So that's this type of checklist called challenge and response, because the pilot monitor will challenge the pilot flying that will check what's the position of the switch and then will respond to the pilot monitoring. But the crucial part here is that even though you are a pilot monitor and you have to read the checklist, you also have to look at the switch because I've been involved in training for more than 10 years. So what I've been, what I've seen is that normally the guy that is doing the checklist is just reading while the other guy is looking at the switch. But it's very important that even though you are pilot monitoring, you are reading the checklist that you actually check and look at the switch anyway, and then you listen to the to the call of your colleague. For example, in my career happened to me many times that even though I was looking at the switch and the pilot monitor called me, they did a, I made the challenge to me, for example, he called generator, I looked at the generator, for example, I thought it was on, but it wasn't. That's because I was doing the same things every day, even though this generator probably was not in the position, for this is an example, okay, was not in the right position. I called in a different position, but fortunately the guy, the pilot monitor was actually looking at the switch and was able to correct me, and vice versa happened to me many times where I correct my the other colleagues and that's why you are true on board and the airline, airline aircraft for example and that's why as a pilot monitoring is very important that you actually look the, uh, at the checklist okay never think that the guy said the right thing confirm and check it out okay it's, uh, it's not it's not a big deal but it is extremely important that you understand this concept okay even though you only read the checklist you still have to look at the switch and make sure that the pilot flying will actually uh, call the correct switch position if you don't know what pilot flying and pilot monitoring is i've done a separate video called the mcc multi-crew coordination where i explain how 
this work, how the synergy inside the fly deck of an airline aircraft works, I will link the, the video in the descriptions below. Then, if you look at the whiteboard, we've got, for example, a challenge and response checklist that the checklist that we just described. So the pilot monitor, we challenge, the, we challenge the pilot flying. The pilot flying will look at the switch and then we respond to the to the pilot to the pilot monitoring. Then we've got the challenge response and action response checklist. And this checklist is made, basically the concept of the checklist is the same, but the way that you accomplish this checklist is a little bit different. The goal of this type of a uh, checklist, uh, this way of doing the checklist is, is to slow down the work process because maybe you are doing an operation that you are not very familiar with or you are not used to do it. The classic example is for uh, uh, the winter operations. If you've been flying for, in summer for, for now, months and then suddenly you, you fly into a winter ops and then in there you have to do a few additional steps and additional procedure to make sure that the operations in winter uh, in winter environment are safe and it, in this case we do this challenge response action response where basically the pilot monitoring will read the challenge and the response and then the pilot flying will take the action and will read the uh, response so there is an extra step in here that we actually make sure that everything is slowed down and that we actually both of us know and repeat what the position should be of the switch. So for example, the, exa the, the, the example that we made before about the generator on a challenge and response checklist will be Palo Monitor says generator, Palo Flying will say on. In the challenge response action response checklist, the pilot monitor will say generator on the pilot flying will put on the generator and say on so as you can see is a little bit more uh, uh, basically the checklist is, uh, is a bit slower in order to make sure that both pilots have time to read because what happens as well during normal operation i have seen it a few times is that because you do the same thing every day one guy read the checklist and the other do and the other guy answer very quickly so sometimes the pilot monitoring doesn't have time to actually look at the switch because he has to read the next step okay then we've got another one, which is the challenge, response and response. This challenge, response and response checklist is another way of accomplishing a checklist. This challenge and response is made by the pilot monitoring and the response after cross-checking and after confirming uh, that the switch is in the correct position is made by the pilot flying. So for example, in the case of a generator, it will be generator on, the pilot flying will look at the generator and say on or off depending on the position of the switch okay this is a, a check is that is used on a normal uh, situation where you are busy okay so where you are busy you, you cannot do the challenge response action response because maybe one guy is flying so the other guy will actually prepare the aircraft do the challenge response and then both of the pilots will look at the switch and the pilot flying will answer okay and then we have the silent checklist the silent checklist is Basically, some, in some phases of flight, like the climb out, for example, the, the pilots are busy, you are busy, everybody's busy. So one guy is actually flying the plane and the other guy is accomplishing the checklist silently, okay? He's cross-checking that the critical switches in the flight deck are actually in the correct positions, okay? That we've got all the uh, correct uh, indications, but still, the way you have to do the checklist and the, the steps that the checklist has changes, changes a lot uh, from one company to another or from one flying club to another one. So this video is not about you should do this, this and that, but it's more about uh, checklist discipline and what it is important. The biggest message that I want to send you is even though you're pilot monitoring, you still have to cross check what the, the position of the switch is and what your colleague is doing. Okay, now let's jump into the simulator and we make actually an example. All right, so welcome on board this Boeing 737. It's the X-Plane 11 simulator, okay? And this is the checklist that I've got, I've found it, okay? Again, it's not a checklist that I use every day. Nobody cares about my checklist. What I, what I want to make sure is that you actually understand how to read a checklist. So the first thing that you have to understand, no matter what plane you're flying, no matter which operations you're doing, make sure you actually go and cross-check what sort of checklist you have to read, you have got, and how you, to, you have to read it, okay? because that's very important, okay? You cannot fly if you don't know how to read the checklist, okay? All right, so let's say in this example, okay, we are in a normal condition, we are doing the challenge and response checklist. In this case, 
the first officer which is sitting here on the right side and the captain which sit on the left side they have to accomplish the checklist okay let's say that in this case the pilot flying is the captain and the pilot monitoring is the first officer so if they have to accomplish this checklist it will be something like that the, pa the pilot flying will call for the checklist first so we'll ask the pilot monitor to accomplish the checklist okay the pilot flying will say before taxi checklist okay and the, the the first officer in this case the pilot monitoring will say generator one and two then both pilot will look at the generators in this case for the boeing 737 are the switches in here will look at them will confirm will verify visually that the switches are on and the pilot flying will answer on then the next one will be probe it the challenge from the pilot monitoring both pilot will look of the probit that these case are here okay and we'll say on if they are on of course if they are not on whether you switch them on and you say on or you, you say the position that the switches are okay of course the pilot monitor will have this list of switches to check in front of him and read him while the pilot flying will not have it okay he has to look at he has to look around to find the switch and set the position of course the captain or the first officer the pilots that are flying the Boeing 737 in this case all of us we are fully trained we know where the switches are so we, we don't look around find, trying to find them we know exactly where to look and everything okay but that's the checklist discipline that is behind them then we've got for example let's say, let's do another example of the challenge response action response checklist is that in this case the captain will call for the before taxi checklist and the first officer will say generators one and two on so challenge response the captain and the first officer both will look on the generators the captain the pilot flying will switch on the generators like this and will say on all right so this is the difference okay because before the the palo monitor was only reading the, the check the challenge generators and the captain was responding after it was visually uh, confirming that the position were, was in, a, in the right place but in this case the first office is actually challenging reading the challenge and reading the response first and then the captain will do the action and perform and response okay that's the biggest difference all right I hope you liked the video, you took something out of it. If you liked the video, consider subscribing to the channel and give it a like to the video. Also, again, if you have any question that is not clear or something that was not clear for my side, leave a comment below and then we'll answer you out. And you can go as well to pilotclimb.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. And I'll see you in the next one.